I remember when my son was maybe 13 or 14 years old, he'd sort of hit that phase where he stopped listening. If we asked him to do something, it sort of went in one ear and, well, you know what I mean. So what did I do? Well, of course, I'd say it again, only this time a little louder. Maybe not my proudest moment as a parent, but at the time, it sort of felt like the only way to get through that situation. Your body does the same thing with a hormone called TSH. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. It's a message that your pituitary gland sends to your thyroid gland, basically saying, hey, we need more thyroid up here. After menopause, your thyroid gland can become sort of sluggish or underactive. And when your thyroid gland is like a surly teenager and just doesn't listen, your pituitary tends to yell louder, cranking up that TSH message to get the thyroid's attention. That's what your labs are measuring. That's what high TSH really means when you see it on the lab report. And as TSH rises, something else tends to rise too, and that is your weight. Now, I want to be clear about this. TSH isn't causing massive weight gain, but it is commonly associated with a frustrating, maybe five pound gain that seems to come out of nowhere. In this video, I'm going to show you why TSH matters, what it means for your metabolism, and why hormone optimization is the strategy that can help you turn those things around. TSH isn't technically a thyroid hormone itself, at least it's not made by the thyroid gland. It's made by your pituitary gland deep in your brain inside your head. TSH's one job is to stimulate your thyroid to produce hormones. Under normal circumstances, this thyroid stimulation process works pretty well. The pituitary senses a dip in thyroid levels in the blood and sends a gentle nudge in the form of that TSH message to the thyroid gland. But after menopause, especially after age 50, your thyroid may not respond the way it used to. So what does the pituitary do? It shouts a little louder. It cranks up TSH to get the thyroid's attention. And if the thyroid still doesn't respond, TSH just keeps climbing. When TSH rises and your thyroid hormones remain low or suboptimal, that's a sign that your thyroid's not responding, your body still feels that. You might notice that you have low energy. You might feel cold all the time. My wife has a friend at work who's constantly bringing out the space heater, even 90 degree summers. You might have brain fog, sluggish thinking, and of course, weight gain. Most doctors only check the TSH, but if you're exhausted, you're gaining weight, you're not feeling like yourself, you might need a more complete picture of what's going on with your thyroid. A hormone optimization specialist is gonna go beyond just TSH and also look at T3 hormone levels, your free T3 and free T4 levels, sometimes something called reverse T3 and even thyroid antibodies used to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Why does all that matter? Because even if your TSH is technically normal, you might still have what's called subclinical hypothyroidism. That's where symptoms are present, but your standard labs look okay on paper. Most people feel better when their thyroid hormones are in the upper half of the normal range, not sort of scraping the bottom. This is what hormone optimization is really all about. It's not just replacing what's missing, but actually dialing in your hormone levels so that every system in your body functions the way it's supposed to. Sometimes that means increasing certain hormones by taking them, but just as often it means reducing other hormones. TSH is a perfect example of a hormone that's too high and your body pays the price for that high TSH level. Optimization isn't about more or less, it's about just right. If you're like many of the women that I hear from, your labs say everything is normal, but you don't quite feel normal. You're tired, you're gaining weight, something's just off. Your primary care doctor just shrugs and says, eh, everything looks fine, don't worry about it. Well, that must be frustrating. <laughs> you're speaking clearly, but no one's listening or no one's hearing you. Just like TSH gets louder when your thyroid stops listening, sometimes you need to get a little louder. Or here's another approach. Find somebody who hears you the first time. A few days ago, I had a great Zoom call with a nurse practitioner named Sarah in Virginia. Sarah's passionate about helping women with menopause symptoms, weight struggles, and thyroid problems. Sarah knows exactly what to do when your TSH is high, your thyroid hormones are technically normal, but you still feel awful. 
In my conversations with nurse practitioners, physicians, and physicians' assistants, I've really noticed a difference between a menopause specialist and what I call a hormone optimization specialist. Menopause specialists are often trained and experienced in hormone replacement therapy. And that's great. HRT is definitely a part of dealing with menopause and all of those symptoms that go along with menopause, hot flashes, night sweats. But some menopause specialists might not be willing or even able to dig deeper, to take a close look at things like your thyroid and deal with high TSH levels and normal thyroid levels. A hormone optimization specialist is somebody with the training and experience to look at all your hormones, the ones you might need to raise up, but also the ones that might need to go down like TSH. There's another stimulating hormone that also gets high after menopause. If you thought thyroid stimulating hormone was loud, just wait until you meet follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how FSH, the other shouting hormone, takes center stage after you go into menopause and why FSH is tied to belly fat, hot flashes, and stubborn weight gain. Click the link on this page to watch that video and I'll see you there.